Hello and welcome to the workshop. Today I'm working on this Brooke Griffin single phase induction motor. I'm replacing the bearings because they are full of old grease and they're cooked. But unfortunately when I was taking the motor apart I managed to break the centrifugal switch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace it with this time delay relay and I'll show you guys how I do it. This is a split phase induction motor. It has two terminals on the terminal block, one for neutral and one for live. Each terminal has two cables attached to it, a black cable, which is for the run winding and a red cable, which is for the start winding. These two cables on the start winding are normally joined by the centrifugal switch. If you can see the centrifugal switch, this is the start position for it. And then as the motor gets up to speed, the centrifugal switch allows this to open up, which disconnects these two cables and stops power going to the start winding. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to permanently attach these two cables. And then I'm going to remove this piece of brass on the terminal block. So that's going to give us three terminals in total, one for neutral, one for switch live and one for live. And the switch live terminal is going to be fed by the time delay relay. Okay, this is the setup we've got. This is a normal single phase contactor and this is the time delay relay. The single phase contactor is just wired up as usual apart from their two live and two neutral outputs. The additional neutral and live output feed this time delay relay and then the live output from the time delay relay will feed the start winding on the motor. The run winding on the motor is just fed straight from the contactor. I've wired up this test circuit to show how it's gonna work. So one light is the start winding and one light is the run winding. So when I press the on button on the contactor, both lights should turn on. And then after a few seconds, one light will turn off, but the other one will stay on. Soldering the joint actually made the heat shrink go off, so I had to cut the uh, ring connector off the end uh, in order to get some new heat shrink on. I thought it would be worth spending a minute explaining how this time delay relay works. So we have four terminals on the input side, A1, S and A2 and 15. A1 and A2 are the live and neutrals for the coil. S is a trigger switch, which we don't need with the function that we're going to be using, function A on delay. And terminal 15 needs a live feed from A1. 
Terminal 16 and 18 are on the output side and they get supplied via Terminal 15 through a normally closed switch in the case of 16 or in the case of 18 through a normally open switch. With function A on delay, when power is applied to the coil via A1 and A2, there's a delay of a specified time period before the relay actuates the switch. We're going to be using terminal 16. So when power is applied to A1 and A2, power will also go through terminal 16 to the load. But then after the time period that we specify and it's adjustable, the relay will actuate and this normally closed switch will become open and this normally open switch will become closed. So after that time period, no supply will go to the load. This is the time delay relay spec sheet. When I was looking over it, I noticed a bit of an issue. The current rating is noted as 16 amps AC1. The AC1 part of that means that the current rating applies to non-inductive or slightly inductive loads with a power factor greater than 0.95. We don't know what the power factor of the motor is because it's not on the nameplate, but we can work it out. So the power factor is equal to the true power divided by the apparent power. This is all the working which you can look at if you're interested. For this motor the power factor is equal to 533 watts divided by 768 VA. That gives us a value of 0.69 which is well below the 0.95 value implied by the AC1 spec. So the way we're going to get around that is instead of the start winding load going through the contacts on the time delay relay like we had before, the time delay relay is going to switch on and off a co another coil in another contactor and then that contactor will actually switch the load of the start winding and that contactor will have a, a higher spec that's designed for switching these sorts of inductive loads. This is the completed starter cabinet. I had to get a bigger enclosure because the other one that I had was too small to fit in the second contactor. I also got a normally closed and a normally open switch for the start and the stop buttons which I've mounted to the front of the enclosure. I've done a few test runs and I found that the time delay relay only needs to be set to a tenth of a second in order to get the motor started when it's under no load. That might change when I mount it on the pillar drill because there will be some friction in the pulleys and that might mean I need to increase the time interval. 